T.D. Jakes and the FBI are now investigating Yuno Jennings after he publicly denounced his friendship with P. Diddy and his refusal to educate the truth about homosexuality. Jennings revealed that after a lengthy discussion with the Black Caucus ministers, it became evident that T.D. Jakes had gone too far. Jakes reportedly urged his attorneys, politicians, and fellow clergy to reapply to the Federal Communications Commission. They seek to silence Gino Jennings by removing him from all media channels and suing anyone who brings him up on social media. This discovery reflects a high-stakes confrontation between strong religious figures, adding another layer of complexity to the ongoing drama. Jennings will not back down from a battle because he is steadfast in his commitment to telling the truth. He stated that he had previously been targeted by the FBI and that this is not the first time. Gino Jennings boldly said that they all asked him to stop denouncing homosexuality. He was adamant in his statement that he will not deviate from what the Bible says and that no amount of money will induce him to quit teaching the truth. He is unwavering in his commitment to delivering the pure message of scripture. Tuesday evening, we had a long talk <laughs> with the head of the Black Caucus and very respectable, very polite. He said, Pastor Jesus, let me tell you that this is how it is. The Potter House, T.D. Jake Stretch, have specifically, above all others, targeted the truth of God. He lawyered up, contact his lawyers, and even if he seeks to reach out to politicians and whatever, stars and men and women of renown to connect with him, to contact the FCC, to ban me off all airways, and to sue those who's speaking about him on social media. <laughs> well, that would include the suit going to some of his followers. Not only that, they want me to stop speaking against homosexuality. Hell, we have to freeze first. <laughs> Amen. Hell, we have to freeze over. Now, some of you folk that have commented last week when I first told you how the caucus reached out to us, and someone said they want to get Pastor Jennings behind doors, and he probably sell out and. If they offer him money, <laughs> you don't know Pastor Jennings. I'm not a whore, you can't buy me. <laughs> he said, now there are other social media groups specifically targeting the first church of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're the FBI, CIA or any political faction, social or religious, who's getting paid, or if you're a member of some church, some religious order, man or woman, if you are by any means getting paid to come in first church, you are nothing but a prostitute for the ones that's paying you. Because when religion, when any faction, religious, political, social, can pay you money to come to God's house, 
to spy out. If you're the FBI or CIA or anybody, if you think by any means that we are deterred, you know, anytime they want to send spies to spy us out, what we are preaching poses a strong threat to them. If I was Joel Austin, you wouldn't bother me. But because they label us as militant, some people over the air say, I'm judgmental. You know when you tell the truth, they say you're judging them. I'm not judging you. God going to do that. I'm just calling the world attention to what God said before I was born. TV Jake's actions have a negative impact on the values of free expression, Christian unity, and the spirit of open discourse, in addition to potentially silencing Geno Jennings. Instead of attempting to silence Geno Jennings, TD Jock might adopt a more positive approach to resolving their differences and promoting a more positive dialogue within the Christian community. A real talk with Jennings could help us find common ground and bridge the divide. In a conversation, the preachers could discuss what the Bible says, exchange thoughts, and look for points of agreement. This strategy not only promotes understanding, but it also acts as an example for others, emphasizing the importance of respectful communication even in the face of opposing ideas. As an alternative, T.D. Jakes should consider revising his own sermons in light of Jennings' helpful assessment. This reflection and willingness to adapt can demonstrate humility and an openness to altering one's beliefs in the face of criticism, all of which can foster spiritual and personal growth. If T.T. Jakes finds it impossible to resolve their differences, he may prefer to focus more on his personal ministry rather than starting a public spat. If you opt to disregard the criticism, you may be able to lessen tensions and allow each preacher to pursue their own route without causing unnecessary strife. Choosing to engage in self-reflection, communicate honestly, or just focus on one's own path is a more useful alternative than attempting to silence people who disagree. These strategies may promote harmony, comprehension, and progress among religious communities. TV Jake's desire to pursue legal action against people who discuss or criticize him raises concerns about free speech and the free exchange of ideas. When someone gets sued for expressing their opinions, it can discourage others from speaking up or providing constructive criticism. This method may give the appearance that strong people are above criticism while also constraining the freedom to free expression. Furthermore, taking legal action might intensify disagreements and create a polarized environment within the religious community. Instead of creating harmony and understanding, this technique may exacerbate tensions and expand the gap between Jake's fans and those who have misgivings or opposing opinions. Open communication and transparency would be a considerably more effective strategy for TD Jakes. Respectful communication with naysayers provides an opportunity to debate issues and fosters a more comprehensive understanding of opposing ideas. It is possible to establish credibility and promote one's spiritual and personal development by reacting to criticism with humility, introspection, and a commitment to continuous improvement. Furthermore, public people such as T.D. Jakes can benefit from creating an environment in their own communities that encourages candid criticism and open conversation. Creating spaces for productive debate and respecting opposing ideas can lead to a stronger and more resilient religious community. Instead than using legal action to silence opponents, T.D. Jakes would be better served by encouraging debate, addressing problems honestly, and creating an environment in which competing opinions are acknowledged. This technique fosters the growth and cohesion of the community he serves while respecting the principles of free expression. T.D. Jake's decision to single out, prosecute, and prolong the procedures in an attempt to silence opponents may unintentionally backfire. Individuals naturally communicate and exchange ideas, which typically end with the passage of time. Jake's risk exacerbating the conflict and making it more remembered and lasting. 
This tactic not only keeps the conversation going, but it also emphasizes the comments he is attempting to overlook. Protracted legal fights can ensure that a disagreement remains in the public eye for an extended period of time, which disrupts the regular flow of public debate. Furthermore, by choosing legal conflict over open communication, T.D. Jakes may unintentionally reinforce a poor perception of his response to criticism. Rather of attracting additional public attention through legal action, embracing transparency, and freely discussing issues may result in a faster resolution and allow the controversy to diminish over time. It is likely that Jake's actions unintentionally prolong the problem rather than taking a more conciliatory and truthful stance. Prioritizing open conversation and understanding above court cases is predicted to result in faster resolution and ultimate fading of the disagreement. Disagreement over doctrine as a basis to target another church can cause enmity and division in society. Instead of developing unity and understanding, such activities may lead to antagonism, strained relationships, and erode the foundation of mutual respect among believers. It calls into question the greater principles of acceptance, love, and compassion present in the bulk of religious teachings, potentially leading some people to forsake their faith entirely. This method goes against the church's primary values of tolerance and open communication. Furthermore, a preacher who targets a rival church may create a toxic environment in which doctrinal disputes are weaponized rather than debated constructively. Congregation members may feel pressure to follow a specific set of beliefs, which can impede personal growth and spiritual development. This rigorous approach can stymie the formation of a diverse and inviting religious community by limiting the flow of ideas and inhibiting group development. Such activities can have a negative impact on the greater religious community, as well as the reputation of the targeted church. It sets a negative example for both congregation members and observers by insinuating that prejudice and violence are acceptable ways to settle doctrinal disagreements. In the broader social milieu, this behavior may deepen cynicism and misconceptions about religious community polarization, resulting in a negative perception of religious groups. Religious leaders must consequently emphasize the importance of civil conversation and understanding in order to foster a safe environment in which people can voice their differences without fear of retaliation or criticism. A high-stakes conflict between competing ideologies and doctrinal differences has erupted, with potentially serious consequences for the values of unity, free expression, and open communication. Rather than taking legal action, T.D. Jakes would benefit from greater transparency, candid conversations, and religious community togetherness. Religious leaders must set a positive example by fostering respectful and inclusive conversation. Religious leaders must set a positive example by fostering respectful and inclusive conversation. Religious leaders must set a positive example by fostering respectful and inclusive conversation. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the film, and I truly hope that every one of us will continue to strive to please God.